Viagra not only dilates the blood vessels in your genitals, it also dilates the blood vessels in your brain. How do we actually lower stress? Well, there are, it's not just food, it's lifestyle as well. So getting enough sleep, exercising lowers stress, being with friends and family. I know that there's a lot of information coming out about, you know, on the internet and on the media and, and just sort of in the social networks about magic pills and powders and things that can actually change your life. What I want to do is to tell you that it's time for us to actually take control of our own health by understanding our own body and understanding what it is that we actually love to eat and where the science is that can support the things that we should eat that can help us improve our immune systems and lower inflammation and kind of contend with the world so that we can go back out and regain our lives and be and act more freely in ways that are actually just better for us even if we didn't have the pandemic, we'd actually be able to live longer, healthier, better lives. So that's one of the things that I want to share with you. I'm really proud to share with you. And here's here's sort of like one of my key messages. There's no single superfood. It's really the body that is actually superb uh, in terms of how it's reaction. So I'm going to tell you about how the body responds. So let's get started. You want to talk about heart health and brain health is stress, chronic stress, which you know I've had as much as you guys really puts an undue burden on our health. Uh, one thing it does: stress causes our adrenal glands, which sit on top of our kidneys, to release a lot of cortisol. Uh, it, it puts a demand on our heart. Our heart beats faster. It also changes our microbiome. It wrecks our blood vessels, our circulation. It screws up our stem cells, and it lowers our immunity. It causes us to be more inflamed. So, how do we actually lower stress? Well. There are, it's not just food, it's lifestyle as well. So getting enough sleep, exercising lowers stress, being with friends and family safely, family, by the way, that you like, uh, actually can lower stress. But I do want to tell you, share with you some interesting stuff. So eating this can actually help you lower stress as well. This is the bar of chocolate. This is 86% chocolate. Anything over 80 will actually do it. It's cacao, dark chocolate. I'll tell you, I, I, it's, this is chocolate I helped to create with a friend of mine. Katrina Markov, um, she has figured out somehow how to make really dark chocolate, completely smooth, not bitter at all. And um, it's with Vosges chocolate. Um, it's called a line of chocolate called Pure Plant. So research have actually studied healthy volunteers who are stressed out. And they uh, measured their blood in their urine to look for stress markers. And what they did is they gave them dark chocolate, kind of like what they just showed you. Um, dark chocolate to eat for a couple of weeks, two weeks. And they found that um, when they measured in the blood and in urine for people who they eat chocolate, the stress markers, eating chocolate lowered cortisol, um, lowered adrenaline, and lowered these stress markers um, uh, in their urine as well. And so high anxiety people can lower their stress markers by eating chocolate. Now what does chocolate do? It actually helps. Uh, also helps the gut bacteria, by the way. Um, also uh, improves brain function uh, and also really, really dark chocolate with cacao has fiber in it. So most people don't think about uh, chocolate, dark chocolate having fiber, but it actually does. Now, here's another really cool research that this is really, really new. It um, was pu published in the journal Nature Medicine. It was a study from the Cleveland Clinic, which is a major medical center. Remember, I told you all science-based information that's rigorously done generating the evidence that you know you can trust because it's science this was a study of seven million people that's a big study they looked in the electronic medical records they looked diseases that these people had of seven million people and they looked at the medicines they were having to see if there's any correlations was there any medicine that somebody was taking that might lower disease guess what they found they found there was one medicine that lowered the risk of alzheimer's disease by 67 percent Wow, in the study of 7 million people, no bias, just going in there and using a computer to figure out were there any medicines people were taking that lowered any disease? One medicine lowered the risk of Alzheimer's disease by 67%. What was that medicine? Guess what? Viagra for erectile dysfunction. People taking Viagra for erectile dysfunction had the lower risk of Alzheimer's disease by 67%. Holy cow. How would that work? Well, it turns out Viagra not only dilates the blood vessels in your genitals, okay? It also dilates the blood vessels in your brain, better circulation for your brain. And the way it dilates blood vessels, widens blood vessels is through something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide stimulates stem cells to regenerate. 
your um, organs. So not only do you have better blood flow in your brain, you also have more stem cells in your brain. Remember I told you about the Chinese celery and the stem cells to treat stroke? So now this is an interesting piece of research that asks what else could stimulate nitric oxide that might be able to stimulate stem cells, uh, widen blood vessels that might be able to do what we observe with Viagra. So this is actually an area of research I'm doing right now. Guess what? There's a food that will do that and I will tell you what it is. Beets. Beets actually will grow low to the ground and so does spinach, absorb a lot of nitrogen from the soil. And when you chew it, the gut bacteria that starts in your tongue, tongue microbiome, converts the nitrogen from the soil in the beet into a form that when you swallow it, gets absorbed into your bloodstream as nitric oxide. Does something very similar to Viagra without genital effect, obviously. Um, but that's now a really interesting area of research to wonder whether or not beets, and by the way, if you don't like regular beets or can't find them, beet juice, look at this. It's Now this has been studied in humans and shown to also um, recruit stem cells and lower blood pressure. By the way, for every one point of blood pressure you lower with beet juice, you decrease the risk of stroke by 5%. So this is stuff that makes a difference. It's been studied in humans. Quite amazing. 